Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. I hope you're all as excited as I am at least to be done with benchmarks, right? We're all happy when we finish benchmarks. That's what I've been doing for the past few days. I've been benchmarking this video card right here. This is the AMD Radeon R9 290X. The uh, card was originally announced in Hawaii at AMD's GPU 14 Tech Day event, which we were able to participate in, which was pretty awesome, and we've been looking forward to the card's launch ever since. And I know you guys are very interested in the benchmarks, so I'll put a little link in the description jumping straight to that if you want to jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and bore you with a close-up look at the card as well as some of the detailed specs. Now this is the reference design of the AMD R9 290X and uh, this is the design that AMD comes out with and it's available to their card manufacturer partners uh, but often what you'll see is they'll take this card and they'll throw a lot of this uh, designs out the window and they'll design their own card but usually at launch for a new GPU like the codename Hawaii GPU that's inside this one you'll pretty much only see the reference design cards at first and then you'll see the custom design cards kind of trickle out. This card is designed with a closed shroud or mostly enc enclosed shroud. Uh, you have a blower style fan down at this end that's going to push air this direction across uh, a set of aluminum fins that's inside there. It's a pretty typical heat sink uh, fan arrangement. Uh, you do have a bit of extra ventilation down at that end. Actually, I feel like that would probably work more as an intake, but uh, who knows? Anyway, at the back of the card here, we can see the PCB, which is sort of a slightly glossy black. The GPU, GPU is located right there at the center. Uh, if you want to know what this GPU is all about, especially if you're comparing it to AMD's recent flagship GPU, the 7970, which has now been reborn as the uh, R9 280X, the uh, 7970 or R9 280X have 2048 stream processors. This one has 2816. It has a uh, core clock or engine clock of 1 gigahertz at launch. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see OEMs pushed that even further. You do, of course, get a PCI Express Gen 3 connector down there at the bottom. It's fully compatible with that, as well as APIs, including DirectX 11.2, OpenGL 4.3, and one of the big ones that was announced uh, in Hawaii, which is Mantle. And Mantle is sort of a tie-in uh, for AMD of both... Uh, the architecture that's in their current uh, series of GPUs, the architecture that they're also using in the PlayStation 4 uh, and the Xbox One. And uh, by using Mantle, it will uh, be able to give uh, developers much better access to the GPU, and you're going to see excellent performance uh, for Mantle accelerated games once they become available. Battlefield 4 is one of the first ones which we're expecting Mantle support for around December of this year. Uh, apart from that, though, compute performance is 5.6 teraflops. Uh, you get an increased memory frame buffer. They're actually gearing this towards higher resolution gaming, such as 2560 by 1600 and 4K. I will be doing a separate video doing some uh, crossfire demonstrations with this card for a two-way configuration and also demonstrating some higher resolution uh, gameplay. So uh, stay tuned for that. If it's not out now, it will be out very, very soon. Uh, but the frame buffer is 4 gigabytes. that's GDDR5. It's a 512-bit memory bus, so that's a, a big upgrade from the 3 gigabytes and 384-bit bus that you get with the 7970 or the 280X. Uh, and then as far as power connectors, which are located right down there, uh, you get a 6-pin and an 8-pin. Uh, so again, make sure you got your, the power supply equipment for that. Uh, and that's about going to do it for a look at... Oh, actually, one, close, one little element I want to point out, which is right down here tiny little switch which you might be able to see right there. Basically that uh, sets up a couple different fan profiles. Now one of the first things you're going to notice about this card, or at least if you're going to look at my benchmarks, or that you would notice if I included it in the benchmarks, is temperature. This card is actually designed to run at 95 degrees Celsius. And it does run at 95 degrees Celsius pretty much all the time when it's under load. And that is by design, so don't uh, freak out. If your card runs hot, that's what it's supposed to do. And we've confirmed this with AMD a couple times already, that that's what the card is intended to do, and it's perfectly safe to run at 95. Uh, in fact, I hit 94 pretty much in every single test that I ran. Uh, but this switch down here is basically going to set up a couple different VBIOSes. Uh, it's going to adjust the fan profile from a 40% cap on the fan speed to uh, a higher cap than that. You can also manually adjust that uh, in the uh, Catalyst control panel, which I'll be showing you guys in a quick overclocking demonstration here in just a moment. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out over here is no more crossfire connectors, if you guys didn't notice that too. No more fingers there. You can kind of see the uh, contact points where they should have been, uh, but crossfire is now simply handled through the PCI Express bus where there's plenty of bandwidth available, so don't worry. They didn't forget the crossfire connectors. It works 
without that, and even though you don't get to put, put the little connector on, which I, I always thought was kind of fun, but it's a bit more convenient that way. Now, I should also point out the uh, I.O. that's available on this card, and uh, AMD is continuing their multi-monitor configuration support, so you get full Ifinity support out of here. You can push uh, four displays just directly out of this card. You can even do up to six uh, if you have an MST hub using DisplayPort and DisplayPort daisy chaining, so that's pretty handy as well. Other than that, a uh, couple dual-link DVI connectors right there. Bear in mind, those are digital only. Uh, you also have a HDMI 1.4 as well as DisplayPort 1.2. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this over to our test bed, plug it in, and show you guys how to overclock it. Here goes. So with the card installed, all I'm going to really do is pop open AMD Catalyst Control Center, which you can access by right-clicking on the desktop once your driver and utilities are installed. Uh, there's basically uh, one little tab we were interested in down here. It's under performance. It is called AMD Overdrive. So here uh, is a look at AMD's sort of slightly modified and updated version of their overdrive utility specifically for uh, the the uh, R9 series of cards. So here we can see uh, the GPU clock it's currently running at for example the memory clock as well as the power temperature and fan speed. Uh, if the card is idling you're you're really not going to see too much going on there uh, but also oh, whoops wrong version of GPU Z uh, but also um, when the card is uh, under load, you'll, you'll be able to see these actually popping up to what they should be. I'm going to be validating with GPU-Z, which is just to the right here. So you can see Hawaii GPU, 28 nanometer GCN architecture. But uh, let's take a look at this chart here. Basically, it starts in the middle. You can underclock or you can overclock. So if you move it to the right, uh, that's going to be your uh, power limit. So by clicking over here, I can set the power limit to 38 or to 42 or to 50, which was what I did. Usually, I just go for maximum power limit settings. Uh, and then I just uh, worked with a few modest overclocks. Again, I didn't have a whole lot of time to play around with this one, but I settled in on a GPU overclock of about 7%, and uh, you can fine tune it with these little arrows here. But uh, I did 7% for the GPU clock, I did 50% for the power limit settings, and then down here you can also have some of these other performance met meters. So you'll see the fan speed defaults to maximum of 40%. I maxed that out just for the purposes of testing, just so it could... Uh, crank up that fan if it did start to get excessive heat. Uh, and then you also have your uh, memory clock performance settings, which are right here. Again, uh, those are fairly easy to update. You can just use the little clicker here to do uh, tenths of a, a point increments, uh, or you can use the slider to do more at once. But uh, again, with just a little bit of playing around, I was able to easily pop in a 7% GPU overclock, which put it at 1070. And by the way, once you hit apply, over here, that's why I have uh, GPU Z up because you can see uh, after a moment the GPU clock will tell you the default was 1000. I just cranked it up to 1070, and then the default memory clock was 1250. And uh, by doing that 5% memory boost, we cranked it up to 1313. So, uh, very easy to play around with and nice to have a little visual chart here. You can kind of click anywhere in there for different variations on that. Of course, uh, bear in mind with overclocking, your mileage may vary and uh, don't go too high or, you know, you, you could risk some, uh, some excessive heat and that sort of thing. But uh, this does seem like a pretty versatile chip and uh, I would especially imagine once we have some custom versions of this, we're going to see some very nice overclocks going on with it as well. So now that you guys have a better idea of uh, what it's like to overclock this card, let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks using those very same overclocking numbers that I showed you. First off, a look at hardware, our test bed, of course, uh, the Intel Core i7-3970X for the processor. That's a 4.5 gigahertz. It's on an Asus Rampage 4 formula. That's an X79 motherboard. We got 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident X memory at 1866, a SanDisk Ultra Plus 256 gig SSD, Rosewell Hercules 1600 watt power supply. It's all in our in-win D-frame chassis. We're running Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. There's all the specs of the R9 290X if you wanted to double check them or take a closer look. Again, we're running this at the stock frequency of 1,000 megahertz. Also, the overclock that I did, which about, was about 7% at 1,070 megahertz, and then about a 5% uh, memory overclock to 1,313 on the GDDR5. To show you guys some reference benchmarks, here's the AMD Radeon HD 7970. That's running at 1,050 megahertz. I also compared it to a couple of the more recently released current-gen R9 series cards. That's the R9 280X, which is essentially uh, the slightly juiced version of the 7970. Also, bear in mind, that's the Sapphire Toxic card that I'm testing it against, so that was running at 1,150 megahertz. And then also the AMD R9 270X at 1,100 megahertz. Our first benchmark is 3D Mark 22 
I just ran the fire strike test on normal and extreme modes. And there you can see kind of scaling up the ladder. Uh, the R9 290X is definitely an ex excellent performer. And uh, by the way, if you're comparing these benchmarks and you want to take a look at any other Newegg TV benchmarks that we've done in the past, I pretty much use the same settings for all the tests. So if you want to compare this against other cards, you can easily do that. 3D Mark 11. Uh, another uh, sort of uh, synthetic test, but I do like it for card comparisons at least. Again, we can see the 290X at the top of the pack, and we can also see a pretty decent boost that it got from that little overclock that I plugged in. Next, we have Unigen. This is the uh, Heaven 4.0 test, as well as the Valley 1.0 test. I just kind of grouped them all together, which is why it's a very colorful chart that you're looking at. And again, the 290X uh, beats out the rest of the pack in this one. And again, some nice boosts given there by our overclock. Next up, we're moving into some more real-world real gaming tests. So Metro Last Light, you can see all the quality settings there on the top right. And then again, the 290X definitely leading the pack. And uh, a decent boost uh, for four or five frames per second given by the overclock. Uh, but we can also see a hefty lead over the 280X. Next up, we have Bioshock Infinite. And uh, Bioshock Infinite, another very popular game. I was in particular. This is one of the few games I've actually finished in recent in recent memory. But uh, anyway, uh, again, R nineteen ninety X doing an excellent job. Uh, almost almost hitting that mythical sixty frames per second on twenty five sixty by sixteen hundred. But I'm sure with a few uh, adjustments to settings, that would be easily fixable and getting you to a higher frame rate. I do run most of these benchmarks at uh, very high settings, so you can always get a better frame rate by turning off some stuff like anti-aliasing or filtering. Uh, here's Battlefield 3. Um, here's where I actually didn't get much of a boost from the overclock. Can't really explain why, but uh, again, we did hit 131 frames per second. Uh, for uh, 1920 by 1080 and about 75 frames per second for 2560 by 1600. So easily playable at 60 frames per second at a really high resolution on this card. So that was really nice. Uh, next up, Crisis 3. Uh, this one is uh, a beast when it comes to graphics performance. So as you can see, the uh, frame rate is a little bit lower compared to some of the other games. But we did manage to beat out 30 frames per second at 2560 by 1600 with the 290X as well as the overclocked 290X. So again, great to see single card 30 frames per second plus performance uh, at that high of a re resolution with a game that is this demanding. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look as well as doing some benchmarking and overclocking with AMD's brand new R9 290X graphics card based on the new Hawaii GPU. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video or if you thought that it was the best AMD R9 290X overclocking and benchmarking video that's currently available, you should click one of these buttons that are down here. There's like and there's dislike. There's also commentary because I'd love to hear what you guys think about this card. And especially with the launch of a new graphics card like this, there's so much pot potential. It's fairly new at this point, but uh, we're, we're, we've still yet to see what the uh, OEMs are going to do as far as special designs of the card. We've still yet to see uh, Crossfire performance. And to that end, I will be also doing a Crossfire video, which again, might not be out right now, but will be out very soon. So be sure to check that one out as well. I'll be doing Crossfire X as well as triple 2560 by 1600 monitor performance. So I'm excited to see how it does. Thanks again for watching though, guys. We'll see you next time.